Hey everyone, my name is Dan Sanchez and I'm a software engineering intern with Electro Industries Gauge Tech. Today, I'm going to walk you through and demonstrate how to connect to and configure any EIG meter using our powerful and easy to use Communicator EXT 3.0 software suite. But before we dive in, let's briefly look at where we can download the Communicator EXT software. First of all, from your desktop, open your favorite internet browser and enter our website www.electroind.com in the address bar. Once we're there, you'll see some links on the site nav bar. Hover over and click on the downloads link where you can find all of our available software. Note that in the downloads section, aside from software, you can find all the available documentation for all of our meters along with the brochures and manuals for the listed devices. To find the Communicator EXT software, we want to click on the software downloads link under the product model sidebar. Once there, hover over and click the Windows 7 compatible hyperlink, which will then allow you to download the software after you fill out the download request form. It will install like any other standard application, and once installed, you'll be ready to connect to and program any EIG meter. All EIG meters use a Communicator EXT application and have similar user interfaces. In this demonstration, we are going to connect to and configure a Shark 200 meter. Getting started, let's launch Communicator EXT. When we launch the program, you're going to notice the user interface with almost all the functions and icons grayed out. Once we connect to a meter, you will see these icons and functions become active. So we'll start by clicking the connect icon. Most EIG meters come with at least one serial interface, and many have the option of an Ethernet interface as well. So from the connect window, we can choose either a serial or network connection by choosing the radio button for that type of connection. The Shark 200 we're going to work with has an Ethernet card, so we will choose the network connection window. Next, we will need to know some information about the meter. The first window refers to the Modbus TCP address for the meter. The default is one. We enter the IP address for the meter, which we refer to as the host address. The default from the factory is 10.0.0.2, but if this has been changed, you'll need to know the IP address for the meter. We press the connect button, and a communicator EXT will find and connect to the meter. A footnote here, you will need to set your PC for a fixed IP address close to that of the meter. We like to use 10.0.0.10. You will need to use the Windows Control Panel to configure your port for a fixed IP. When we're connected to the meter, a device status window will open. This tells us the name of the device, the type of device, the serial number for the meter, and information about firmware and other configuration details. Click on OK to go to the next step. Notice that now most of the icons are active. We're going to work with the profile of the meter, so click on the profile icon. In just a few seconds, the software will read the profile information that is currently programmed in the meter and load a template of the profile. The first window is used to configure the CTs and PTs if they are used. We will also configure the system wiring information. So let's say we have an 800 or 5 CTs, and that since we are monitoring a 480-277 three-phase Y, we're not using PTs. Shark meters can directly monitor a 480-277 system. So first, we enter the CT numerator of 800, and we already have the denominator at 5. We can then see our ratio. The meter will multiply any current reading in the secondary side of the CT by the ratio to calculate the correct current in the primary. Next, we'll choose the system wiring type as a 3-element Y. Under General, we see the System Settings window. In this window, we can set the password for the meter. Next in this window, we can enter a meter designation. This will be shown in the device status window and kept in logs and file names to identify this meter. It will be the name of the database where the log records are stored. Choose a unique identifier that will make it easy for you to remember what this meter is used for and where it is located. We will use Building 5 Upper Site 1 as a meter identifier. Next, we'll look at the communications window. From here, we configure the onboard RS-485 port. This includes address, protocol, baud rate, response delay, and parity. The first tab under revenue and energy settings is energy, power scaling, and averaging methods. First, we'll set the number of digits, how many decimal places, and the units for energy. So for example, we can set the digits to eight, three decimal places, and units of kilo. All readings will be in kilowatts with readings like 54,534.322 kilowatt hours. Next, we choose the power scaling and choose a method for calculation of apparent power. Finally, we'll choose a demand averaging type of block or rolling and select the interval and sub-interval parameters for rolling. Your local public service commission will determine how to set this value. Our next screen is titled Waveform PQ. 
The meter will come with pre-configured settings to capture most events of interest. The Shark 200 meter allows you to set limits on the voltage and current to trigger an entry into the power quality log or trigger a waveform capture. Once we set up our trigger conditions, we can set sample rates and control how many pre-trigger cycles we want to capture per event. Our next set of windows are used to configure historical logs. The Shark 200 can be configured to log measured data on a user set interval period over time. Let's take a look at historical log profile one. First, we want to determine what information we want to be saved in the log. We can choose from anything the meter reads or calculates. So from the group tab, we choose a group of values like measured values, energy, accumulators, or other defined groups. From that group, we get a list of selectable items to add to that log. We can add or remove items. As we do, the status of the log will tell us how much memory we have used and how many values we can still add and how long it would take for the meter to fill the log. As long as we download the logs more often than the time available, we will never lose data. We can also change the memory partitions for the logs to add memory to a log that may have more data than others. This meter has an Ethernet card, so that shows up as one of the I.O. cards in the profile. We can set the IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway here in the profile. Let's set this meter to an IP of 10.0.0.7. Now we have set the meter up with changes in several areas. For example, we set the CT for 800 or 5 CTs, but at this point, we've only been entering data into a template of the profile. So in order to load the new profile, we will use the update device button on the bottom of the profile window. This will take these settings and put them into memory for the meter. Also, we could just save this profile as a file to be used to replicate settings in multiple meters or just so that we have one stored for later use by saving the save profile button. So let's go ahead and update the meter with a new profile. Let's watch the meter as it goes through the update process. The meter downloads the new settings and then reboots. Remember, we changed the IP address so now we have lost communication with the meter from communicator EXT. We need to go back and disconnect from the old IP and then connect using the new IP of 10.0.0.7. And we're back. If we went onto profile, we would see that all of our settings have now been loaded into the meter. So there you have it. We have covered how to connect to an electro industries meter and then modify a profile template and load those settings into the meter. Please contact the custom engineering team for any questions as you work through this with your EIG meter. Thanks for tuning in.